Hi guys, we're back with sessions 49. Hope you had a good holiday, because I did. Happy New Year to everyone. Today our discussion will be, what if you were the nurse? And more than likely this will continue for quite a few sessions. Today the topic is overview of your critical thinking. If you were the nurse who is assigned to PACU, basic facts about the EKG, patient assessment in PACU, dehydration, and post-op pneumonia. So let's get started. Here is a patient uh, nurse who is thinking, I wish I could put the pieces of the puzzle together. Well, your critical thinking can be a challenge, that's true, but remember, there is a way to do things the right way and the wrong way. Here are some helpful hints. First, you are the nurse. You have been assigned to a patient. You gather information, relevant information. You want to know things like the history, the diagnosis, allergies, anything else that's relevant. You get your plan of care. And you have to know, of course, the hospital's policies and procedures. This, of course, is just an overview. And if you take note of some of the other sessions, there is one called that references your critical thinking. Now, here is a nurse who has been assigned to PACU. That's PACU, some people call it, or it might be called, the real name is post-anesthesia care unit. This nurse above is very upset, needless to say. She has been assigned to a unit she's never worked before. She has no idea how to start. So, <clears throat> we never know when we ourselves could be placed in that position, and I've had it happen to me. So here's, let's get started on some of the basics. First of all, even if you do not know how to read an EKG, and of course I refer you to session 16, knowing how to read an EKG, but even if you didn't, you could take a quick look and look for what's normal or abnormal. Look at things like, is there a P wave, which I've shown you here? Is there a QRS and is there a T? What do they really mean? Well, what's normal? A normal EKG should have a P wave. And what it really means is the sinoatrial node, which is the pacemaker of the heart, has fired. So that encourages blood to flow through the heart. And then the atrioventricular node, which comes up with a QRS, has fired. And then that causes the ventricle to contract pushing blood into the lungs to be purified. If that doesn't happen, then you need to be concerned. Another concern is your rate. There are normal rates and abnormal rates. Below 60 should be a concern, but there are some other variables, like in the case of the athlete. Over 100 is usually when, uh, to 150, and then there are reasons, like a fever. Patient might be a bit agitated and in pain, there might be reasons. Let's take a look at what a PACU work order would look like. This patient has just arrived in PACU. There are orders like O2 or 2 liters a minute, NPO until uh, usually they keep them NPO and give them IV fluids and there is also Dilaudid for pain relief and of course you monitor the patient's vital signs check the dressings because there might be bleeding coming from the dressings. Remember the patient who comes into PACU might be feeling a little confused after having all those medications and you should reorient them to where they are. And then of course take note of things like this. You, um, you should bear in mind a patient coming into PACU has the potential for dehydration. Reason being that patient has lost lots of fluid and not only that has been NPO probably from midnight the night before, possibly being one of those cases late in the day. So all of these things should be taken into account. Also take into account post-op pneumonia. You encourage them to take deep breaths. You have to reposition them per doctor's orders. And of course, don't forget vital signs. Don't forget to check your dressings. Don't forget to check your IV sites. And we can go on and on and on if you refer to the other sessions. And you may just want to take a look at the clinical settings step by step at dearnurses.net. And that should be of great help to you. Have a good day. And again, stay posted for more clinical information because this series will continue.